How's this for an admission? Army general, U.S. military wasn't necessarily concerned about killing civilians in Iraq during the surge. Wow. We've always been told uh, the opposite, huh? I know when I was raised, I was told the opposite. Oh, no, we're the good guys. We always look out for stuff like that. They're admitting it here. Now, you might, well, come on, but who is this person? It's only the Army's top general overseeing logistics in Iraq. The person who oversees logistics. So the person who's like, hey, I think there are civilians there. This is the person who's saying, we weren't necessarily concerned about civilian casualties. So this is Lieutenant General um, Andre F. Piggy. Um, and this is according to Business Insider, quote, these high-tech munitions limit collateral damage, and we were not necessarily concerned about that at the height of the surge, Piggy said, according to a transcript on the AUSA website. Now in Mosul, we are absolutely concerned about that. Yeah, I'm sure. The statement is starkly different from the usual Pentagon messaging of always taking care to reduce civilian casualties. A 2003 American Forces Press Service article for example, touted the use of precision-guided munitions that would reduce casualties in the Iraq War. The same article quoted then-Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld as saying the coalition would take great care to avoid them. Still, Piggy's statement seems a stunning explanation for the rise in civilian deaths during that time. A civilian, excuse me, civilian deaths in Iraq went up by roughly 70% in 2007, according to the Carnegie Council for Ethics and International Affairs. Perhaps the most infamous example came in the release of the Iraq war logs by WikiLeaks. Leaked gun camera footage taken by U.S. Apache helicopters in 2007 showed the pilots firing on and killing several civilians, including two Reuters journalists. Okay. Um, so, here's the deal. We actually shouldn't be surprised by this. Because the evidence piling up and it's just kind of hidden from our eyes a little bit. If you, if you read enough and you get the right outlets, then you'll see. So, for example, on drone strikes, there are a variety of different kinds of drone strikes. Um, there's personality strikes and signature strikes and double taps. Personality strikes is where we say, we know who we're getting. We have good intelligence and we're going to go after them. Um, a signature strike is where they go, hmm. Not really all that sure, but we're going to go after them. And double tap is when they circle around and kill the first responders. So, killing, circling around and killing the first responders is so common, they have a name for it. Think about that. Now, even under Obama, who's like widely regarded as, oh, come on, he's more reasonable and more moral than a guy like Trump, an unhinged buffoon, True, but even under Obama, 90% of the time, drone strikes got the wrong targets. So, I mean, that's, that's telling now, isn't it? That even under the more responsible president, that's what happened. And there are interviews with former drone operators who have fucking PTSD and they're all fucked up, and they're talking about how, I, I did horrendous things. I mean, the culture inside these, uh, you know... Among these drone operators is one where they're they're doing drugs. They they ki they'll kill fucking anybody. They say ah whatever we're cutting the grass. These are fun sized terrorists. So that many people believe oh well, I don't know what you mean. Of course we're overwhelmingly concerned about civilian casualties. That's just the propaganda that we've been fed that a lot of people uncritically believe. I mean, how could, if we were so concerned about civilian deaths, how could it be that there were minimum 200,000 deaths in Iraq, civilian deaths in Iraq? Man, you must be the clumsiest motherfuckers on the planet then, huh? We're so concerned about it, but oh, fuck, 200,000 civilians uh, just died. Seems like you're not all that concerned about it. Now, I don't think they're trying to kill them on purpose, but it's just like they don't care. They just view, whatever, file under collateral damage. Yeah, whatever, we're trying to get ISIS or Al-Qaeda or the Taliban, or whatever, depending on which conflict you're talking about. But, I don't know, there's a, one Taliban commander in a room full of 12 civilians. Who cares? Pull the trigger. 
Freedom and democracy, human rights. That's not human rights. That's not human rights. And now you have the admissions. The, the top general overseeing logistics. Look, we're, we weren't necessarily concerned about space. Oh, but we are now. Oh my God, we are now. Really? Is that why we've been reading reports about how Trump is loosening the rules of engagement? He did it specifically in Somalia. You know, you used to be, oh, okay, you're supposed to wait until theoretically somebody's looking like they're going to attack you or they fire on you and then you're fine. They go, no, we can't fight politically correct wars. This is something Trump says, Ben Carson, other people on the right. Can't fight politically correct wars, you know? that You know what that means? Forget international law, human rights. Are you there to do the job or not do the job? Just start going guns blazing, man. Going guns blazing. How many times did people say carpet bomb the area? I want to see if sand can glow. That's something I think Ted Cruz said. We're using white phosphorus in Syria. On in mostly civilian populated areas. So Raqqa, which is the capital of ISIS, but there's tens of thousands of civilians trapped there. We're using white phosphorus there. We're using um, uranium tips. That's illegal under, under international law. We don't give a fuck. On Trump's first military act as president, it was a raid where he managed to kill an eight-year-old American girl. <laughs> if we were the freedom and democracy loving, human rights caring, you know, country that we've been told throughout our lives, we wouldn't be al top allies with Saudi Arabia, we wouldn't be top allies with Israel, we wouldn't be doing shit like this, but we are. So we have to wake up from the collective delusion and actually try to hold our country accountable and make it so, first of all, we mind our business and we don't fight wars we don't need to fight. But if we do, it should be for self-defense and we should actually care about human rights and freedom and democracy, but we don't.